Okay, I'll take a, just a few minutes. I don't want to stand between people and food. Um, the most frequent question I get is, there, there's your food, yeah, but that's, that's not ready to eat yet. The most frequent question I get is, where can I find peas for feed? The second most frequent question I've had the last year is, can I feed lentils? With the lentil market recently and the devalued price, I think that probably justifies why people are interested in feeding lentils. Last week I was in Fargo and there was a discussion with some Canadians present and they were using lentils in swine rations, which was a little bit surprising to me. The discussion had to do with distillers' grains being shipped from North Dakota and South Dakota and, and Minnesota to the feedlots in southern Alberta. The ethanol producers are starting to take fat out of the distillers' grains now, and what we're seeing is lower feed value for distillers' grains. And that means the most competitive feed source in Canada is peas. And for the swine industry, they really like peas because of the lysine content. So peas are destined for swine and poultry in Canada. In the U.S., in North Dakota, we've put peas into the diets of, of cattle, feedlot cattle, in order to make more juicy and tender ribeyes. Cliff Isendorf is with us today, the, the godfather of pea-fed beef. Uh, without Cliff's promotion, I think my life certainly wouldn't have been as exciting as it's been feeding peas and talking about peas. We have calls from Virginia and Wyoming and Iowa and, and, and even Alaska. They're feeding peas to dairy cows in Delta Junction, Alaska instead of importing $1,200 a ton soybean meal. So the influence of peas around the world is, is growing. I work with some producers that have exported cattle to Kazakhstan and, and peas can grow in Siberia where they need energy and they need protein. So this is a feed that, that needs to be promoted around the world for the sake of people and our human nutrition and cattle and hogs. This is, a, this is a great feed. Not only can we use the grain in the diets for these animals as a very nutrient dense protein and energy source, down the road a little bit you'll see cows and calves in a pen. An unusual management system where we, we are dry lotting cows. In this part of the country where we have uh, primarily cropland and very little grazing land, we can take the residue and the co-products off the land and from the processing plant and feed them to cows in a pen. And one of the pea products is straw. We take all the straw from the pea fields and we use it in our feed rations and we use it in bedding practices in the wintertime, which is critical to us because of the winter. And so this dry lot cow operation fits well with the, the pea and the other crops that we grow in a, in a rotation of our, of our normal cropping systems in this part of the country. So my, my needs in the near future are to study a little more lentils, to look at pea as a forage that we can probably double crop. We do have some pea forage data that we have written up. It's on the uh, beef report, which is on the table up at, uh, at the lunch counter. You can take a copy of that if you want. And uh, we have an extension circular that we published on pea grain six years ago, and we need to update that. The world needs more peas. This is an excellent feed ingredient. Uh, we've got more opportunity to use it here in North Dakota. Uh, we haven't made the connection between feeding peas and this high-quality, tender, juicy, pea-fed beef product into the consumer on a regular basis. We don't have enough peas that feeders can consistently find peas. Uh, we have markets, local markets like our butcher shop in town that are willing to buy pea fed steers from us and sell them to you all. Uh, we've got a new butcher shop in Bowdoin. We've got people in other parts of the country that want to feed peas to their cattle to differentiate their beef product from other beef that's being marketed in their area. So they recognize the value of peas and, and these people that call and ask for more peas are, are seeing the the palatability and, and the likability to their cattle and the performance of their cattle uh, from their own experience or from their neighbor's experience or from what they've read. And, and primarily those guys are, are, cat, are cattle feeders to finish cattle. They're purebred breeders that like peas in their bull diets because of the muscle development and the improved feet and leg problems. And in some cases they're lamb feeders. And they will insist on having peas in their lamb rations because of the performance of the lambs. And I guess the Canadians like them in their swine diet. Peas have a wide versatility. Pea, pea uh, straw, pea forage, valuable to us uh, in the livestock industry. 
and this all fits in our crop rotation. My concern or, or my worry in the future with the influx of corn and soybeans in this part of the nation and growing farther north and efforts to grow more corn and soybeans in southern Canada are that our diversity is challenged and losing crop acres like peas is a worry because this is an important human food product all around the world, let alone uh, a feed product and, and admittedly livestock have typically been a bottom feeder to keep the residue price of peas or the low quality price of peas from tanking too far uh, because cattle producers are now recognizing its value and, and are willing to pay. So uh, some are willing to pay the market price, frankly, uh, and that's good. So we'll keep that, keep the bottom of the, the pea market strong with our livestock industry. So uh, I think that's enough for today. Any, any questions? The question is, have we ever figured out what's the cause of the tenderness? Uh, there is a little bit of progress in that area. Some of our muscle biologists on campus, uh, there's some mechanisms in there that trigger the kelpane kelpostatin, and we don't know if it's the uh, what the compounds are in peas just yet. Uh, we, we think it has to do something with the uh, hormonal mechanisms of the cattle and, and how that affects the, uh, the tissue uh, after, after death, uh, the aging process, it speeds up the aging process essentially uh, is our theory.